Welcome back to the Barbecue Lab. My name is David Gafford and I am joined by my lovely wife, Melissa, today. And we have a question that we get asked all the time and that is what do you do with leftover brisket? So today we're gonna to show you how we make brisket pizza. All right, so for this brisket pizza, we're actually going to make our own dough here. And to get started, we actually have to proof the yeast. And so to do that, what do we do, Melissa? So we're gonna go ahead and start with two teaspoons of yeast, one teaspoon of sugar, and three quarter cup of warm water. We want the water between about 105 and 115 degrees. So we'll go ahead and put that in. And then we're gonna mix it up? We'll mix it up with the whisk, just a little bit. And then we're just gonna leave that for five to 10 minutes and it'll bubble and rise. It'll kind of look like the top of a nice frothy root beer. All right, so we'll be back in about five minutes. Mm -hmm. All right, so welcome back. It's five minutes is super fast in the magic of television here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and see that the yeast has proofed and that we're ready to start pulling this together. So Melissa, what's next to actually pull this, this dough? Together? Okay, so uh, we've got two and a quarter cup of flour, a teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of olive oil that we're gonna to add to the mix. And we're gonna use our, our dough hook to pull it all together. All right, so it's pulled together. So Melissa, how do we know when it's time to stop the mixer? Okay, so um, once the dough has formed kind of a solid ball and it has done a very good job of cleaning up the bowl, there's not any loose flour or any other ingredients in there. It's, it's all come together in one solid ball. Um, the last thing that we wanna do is add a little bit of extra seasoning. We're gonna sprinkle in a little bit of garlic powder, um, some light crushed red pepper and some Italian seasoning. Um, right into the dough and that'll give it a nice pop of flavor in the crust. Okay, so the dough has finished incorporating all the ingredients inside and we have this nice little dough ball. And one of the things that we haven't said yet is that this dough serves how many? This is gonna make four individual pizzas that we are going to cook on the grill. All right, so grilled pizzas, one of our favorite things to do. So we're gonna spray down the inside of this little uh, Pyrex dish, and then we're gonna basically divide it into four dough balls. And then what do we need to do once it's in there? Um, we're gonna put the dough balls in, then we're, um, then we're going to flip them over so that the top of it also has a little layer of the spray on it so it doesn't stick and then we're just going to set those aside for a couple of hours and then each of the individual balls will have some, a chance to rise before we uh, spread them out to make our pizzas. Great. All right, so our pizza dough has been rising for the last couple of hours, and you can see what it looks like here inside the Pyrex dish. It's actually doubled in volume, and each one of the individual pizza crusts is looking like it's ready to be rolled out and put on the grill. So, uh, Melissa, talk us through the process of what we're gonna do next. Uh, so you can do it one of two ways. You can either use a rolling pin and roll it out and shoot for like a uniform, nice, uh, aesthetically pleasing shape or you can roll the dice and use your hands and make it fun shaped and 
um, unique, every, every pizza unique. Um, but you want to make sure you prepare your pizza dough on a lightly floured surface. I don't know, but whenever I roll out my pizza dough, it usually looks like the state of Texas. Yes. It's never circular, so. That's for, part of the fun. For those trying this at home, don't expect to circle. And uh, Texas, you know, that kind of a shape is, you know, barbecue proud, right? <laughs> <clears throat> I like to lay the dough down on the flour and then flip it over first before I start rolling it out so that the top is um, lightly floured as well. and then. That way it doesn't stick to the rolling pin, rolling pin. You can really see those those herbs and things that we that we loaded into it. And you can see that those spices in the in the dough, which is lovely. You want to flip it over and kind of shimmy it around every now and then so that the dough doesn't stick to the surface that you're rolling it on. So we're gonna transfer this over to um, our cutting board, but I'm gonna lightly flour the cutting board as well so it doesn't stick to that. So we have our crust rolled out, we're ready to take it out and put it on the grill. And we're gonna see you in just a second when we get this out there just to bake off one side. So we have the crusts that are ready to go out on the, on the grill here, and we're just using a gas grill today. It doesn't matter what kind of grill you wanna use. You can do this on a Kamado, you can do this on an offset, you can do this on all types. But the idea is we just wanna cook off one side of the crust and make it so we can put toppings on the side that's cooked, and we'll still leave the uncooked side down for the second half of the cook. So let's get these on the grill and let's see what they're gonna look like. And I know it seems weird to put actual pizza crust on the grill grate with nothing underneath it, but trust me, they're gonna be absolutely fine. Here in just about 60, 90 seconds, we'll show you what they look like. They'll be golden brown and delicious. Okay, so the crusts have been on for about 60, 70 seconds. Let me show you what they look like. See how they puff up like an elephant ear that you find at the fair? That's what we're looking for out of these crusts. And if you actually flip these over, you're gonna notice that they get a little bit of color to them. And that's all we're looking for, just a little bit of color. We're making the top of this non-porous. And you could let these go a little longer if you want, but what I find is that for our liking, we don't need to go any longer than that. All we're doing is just cooking off a little bit of this side so we can build our pizza on the top. Now, remember this underside here is still pretty raw. It's still, under, it's still undone. But once we build our pizza on the top, then we're gonna come back out, put the pizzas back on the grill, and finish them off. All right, now we've cooked off one side of the pizza crust and that gives us the perfect base to be able to build our pizzas on. Now, one of the things that's great about doing grilled pizzas is that you can build them just about any way you want. And so we're gonna show you two different ways to build this. Melissa's gonna build it kind of the reverse build and I'm gonna build it the traditional way that we usually build our, our, our pizzas. And so tell me what's gonna be uh, different about yours. Well, I think I'm gonna put my sauce on top. Well, first let's talk about the ingredients that we've got out for you. We've got our leftover smoked brisket. Um, we have some red onion that we've lightly sauteed. We have some feta cheese crumbles. We have some fresh mozzarella slices. We have um, the crispy fried onions. And we have a dog drinking water in the background. We have barbecue sauce, olive oil, and cilantro and basil, which are good garnishes um, once the pizza is cooked. So I am going to start with some olive oil and I'm gonna build backwards and finish with my barbecue sauce. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and put barbecue sauce as my base and I'm gonna build everything else up at the top and put cheese on top. Okay. So the real idea is there's, there's no real wrong way to build a grilled pizza. The only wrong way is not to do it. And we're teaching you today so you can avoid that mistake but i'm just telling you take some brisket stick it on a pizza a little bit of cheese a little bit of barbecue sauce this is this is good eats right here
All right, so we've got the pizzas. They're ready to go back on the grill. I went ahead and turned the heat down on the grill to about a medium because we don't want to scorch the bottoms, but we want the cheese and things on top to be able to melt a little bit. So it's okay if it takes a little bit longer. Let that convection heat actually uh, work around inside the grill. Now, um, I've been grilling pizzas for a long time, and here's the way that I always tell people to do it, and let me show you the way that we generally don't really lose any toppings. All right, so here's how we do it. You just take your pizza, you're just gonna slide it onto the grill. And that's it. Easy peasy. We'll tuck those bad boys away for a couple minutes and we'll check it on about three or four minutes, I would say, just to make sure that the bottom isn't burning, there's no hot spots on the grill, and that we will have a nice, crisp, and delicious crust. All right, so the pizzas have been on right around five, six minutes on medium. And here's what you can see. You can see that this nice fresh mozzarella has melted on the top. You can see that that's getting nice and melty. The same thing over here on the other pizza. And what you can see on the bottom of these pizzas, if I lift this up, you can actually see that it's getting nice and a little golden brown and delicious. That's what we're looking for. So I know that these pizzas are ready to come off because I can see on the bottom that they're getting nice and golden brown. That means that we're gonna have a nice crispy crust and that's exactly what we're looking for. So these pizzas are done. We're just gonna take them off inside, let them cool down for just a minute, then we're gonna cut into them. Okay, so the pizzas have come off the grill and they've rested for just a few minutes. Now it's time for us to go ahead and cut these up and get a taste. Now, before we, before we cut these up, I usually like to put some fresh herbs on my pizza. I know, Melissa, you do too. And so we actually have two fresh herbs and I decided I'm gonna go with cilantro. And you're gonna go with? I'm team basil. I'm a sucker for fresh basil. So let me give that a shot. All right, so she's gonna put basil on hers. I'm gonna put a little cilantro on mine. So let's go ahead and do that. And when you comment below, we need to know who you think is gonna win this one. You know, who actually has the better pizza? Who looks better? Who chose the right herb? Who's cuter? Okay, I know that's gonna be you. I'm just gonna lose that one right away. But um, this is where I like to give mine a little, just a little pop of, there we go. A little pop of cilantro. Cutter. We're just gonna take it and cut it in half. And these are small enough, I'm just gonna put them in force. And there we go. Same thing with Melissa's. Listen to that crunch. All right. So, we have our pieces. Are you ready to try? <laughs> All right. Ready. It's probably still gonna be hot. Ready? Mmm. Mm. Cilantro is a good choice. So is the basil. All right. They can so, both work. So we both win? Mm-hmm. Mm. So, Melissa, can you recap really quick what we did to make these? So we made our own dough, just basic yeast, water, sugar, flour, salt, oil. But then we dressed it up with some um, extra herb, some seasoning with some garlic powder and Italian seasoning and um, some red pepper. Red pepper flakes. Let that rise, and then we've we've used some leftover brisket, some fresh mozzarella, some feta, some barbecue sauce. And lastly, the little French fried onions mm. and um, finished off with cilantro or basil, depending on your liking. And I gotta tell you, these French fried onions, I don't know if you were able to see this or not, but they really crisped up and took some really good color there on the grill. And it gives it that excellent crunch. You've got the crunch of the crust, you've got the crunch of the fried onions on mm -hmm. top. And the fried onions, they just go with brisket. Nice pop of flavor. Really, really that. good. Mm -hmm. So we hope you try this one at home and you delight your friends, delight your neighbors, delight your family with this, with this recipe or try one like it and let us know how it goes in the comments below. But make sure you leave a comment and let us know which one you like better, whether you're Team Melissa or Team David. <clears throat> and I gotta admit, I'm, I'm Team Melissa anyway. <laughs> but <clears throat> the whole idea is we want you to delight your friends and loved ones with barbecue that works for your family and your friends. So make sure if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that bell to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new video, because we put new videos up every week. We try to get one or two every week. And we'd love to see you the next time we have a video right here on the Barbecue Lab. See you next time.